All right, I got my, uh, this is my power tool uh, tips about uh, how to use power tools, or at least how to use a drill. And I want to talk about the clutch here. And uh, you probably may, you may or may not know how to use the, uh, the clutch properly on a drill. And this is your most basic, your household uh, kind of drill, Black & Decker, kind of bottom of the line. I think the Black & Decker, I think uh, the same company makes the uh, DeWalt uh, set a uh, family of drills. And the DeWalt is a kind of the more professional line. And the Black & Decker is the consumer uh, line of drills. And this basic one, nothing particularly fancy about this. Uh, this happens to be, let's see, uh, 650 uh, RPM, 18 volt uh, drill. So it's got the big old NICAD on the bottom. And I, I did some other videos about the, the NICADs, tips how to, how to maintain them and how to tell if they're good or bad or not. And uh, this uh, drill itself was a standalone. Um, I did get the kit, and I've done other videos on my kits. Um, my my single kit, I had the recipe saw, um, the skill saw, and I got another uh, drill with that kit. Actually, I think I think the drill that came with the kit was this one, uh, but I never used it because I used another one. I had a, a I bought an extra uh, battery um, because I wanted two batteries, one as a backup, and one battery uh, alone if you buy the battery is about fifty dollars but at Canadian Tire you can find a drill a battery and a whole bunch of bits uh, on sale for about fifty dollars so for the same fifty dollars instead of getting one battery you can get a drill an extra drill uh, an extra battery and a whole bunch of bits in a case and uh, so this one actually sat in my case not used uh, because the the drill, the standalone drill, was a bit faster RPM, had a bit more torque, uh, but I, I broke that one. My my forward reverse button on it died, and uh, these are you know these are cheap drills, and uh, they're not quite disposable, uh, but they do break, and they're certainly not top of the line. Regardless, that's kind of a conversation uh, for something else. Else, I wanted to show you um, this clutch, and all drills these days have clutches on them. And so what you have is a, a little icon here, which looks like a little drill bit uh, with dashes on it. And then you have, you know, a whole bunch of numbers on my uh, better drill that I actually broke. I think it had uh, 1 to 10 or 1 to 15 or something. This has 1 to 5 for clutch settings. And what that means is on 1, um, it's not going to take a lot of force to stop the, uh, the chuck. So if I hold the chuck here and press the trigger... I'm going to be able to hold it, no problem. I can hold it with two hands. But if I move it up the scale, say to three, it's going to be a little bit harder to hold. Now I need to hold, use my hand to hold it. Now if I move it to five, that's kind of the uh, maximum strength while allowing it to still slip. Um, and if I move, use it to drill, um, that means don't slip at all. And that's because my battery is kind of half dead, but uh, it, it, it won't slip basically. So what I want to show you is um, the way you can use it is for doing drywall or something. I'll just demo demonstrate here. So if I've got a, a board, let's see if you can see this. I've got a board here, and I've got you know an inch long screw. Nothing fancy, nothing, nothing big. This is not a, a show of power for the drill. Um, necessarily, uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, drill it. It is currently on. I'm going to put it to the drill mode here. Um, so that means no clutch, and I'm going to drill. So you can see it, uh, and that wasn't slipping there. That was actually the bit slipping. I need a new bit. Um, but you can see, uh, I don't know if you can see it. Um, the screw is actually below the surface of the wood. Now, if I take that out. Now you may want to countersink, you may not. You may want to countersink a little bit. In terms of drywall, you want to do, uh, take the screw in as far uh, as the head is flush with the, uh, with the drywall, uh, but you don't want to completely pierce the, the uh, paper on the outside of the drywall. Um, because if you do, the strength is in the paper, not in the chalk stuff inside the drywall. Um, so to countersink it, what you can do is use the clutch here. So I'm, I'm gonna put this down to one. 
I don't know if you can see that, but trust me, it's on one. And uh, you'll see that it goes in so far, and then it starts slipping, and it won't go any farther. Right, so it gets that far, and obviously it's not very far down. But what you can do now is you can say, for the, you know, if you've got 50 screws to do, you can say, I want it to uh, sink into the wood um, to this particular depth. And so what you do is you adjust the clutch to where it gets into the wood as far as you need it to. And that one, I actually, I actually uh, picked it perfectly. It's on clutch position 3. Like I say, you probably can't see that. Where are you? Clutch position 3. And the clutch position 3 was enough to take the screw head down to where it's almost flush with the surface. I could maybe uh, put it up to 4. And that might take it. Let's see what that does, whether it takes it below the surface. That's a little too much. So you see that 4 took it below the surface? What I want to do is just take it, um, just kind of flush with the surface. So three seems to be the best clutch position for that. Now on the higher end drills, you're going to have uh, obviously more options for your clutch settings, which I was suggesting on my better drill that I broke, um, there was one to ten or something, so I had more granular settings, so I could really make it flush with the surface. So I set it to three there, and I'll drill it again. We'll see if this does it, makes it flush with the surface again. And it did, so um, that's pretty good. So what you can do is you can come along and uh, figure out the clutch setting for your first screw. And you say, okay, three is going to um, do what I need it to each time. And then every screw going forward is going to uh, go in that far. Even if you keep holding down the trigger, it will only ever go in that far. This is really handy for drywall because now, now if I can find another screw here, there's another screw. So now it's a no-brainer. Now I don't have to think about it anymore. I can just hold the trigger and go, and it's going to stop on its own automatically when it gets to the right uh, when it gets to the right depth. So you can see it stopped right there. When it starts clicking, I know it's uh, as deep as it's going to go, and that that's the perfect depth uh, because that's what I set the uh, the torque ring to. So I can just go and do 50 screws like that. I don't have to feather the throttle. I don't have to uh, think about how far I'm putting the screw in. The torque, uh, uh, torque clutch does it all on the screwdriver. And uh, the better model, the higher end model the screwdrivers have much more granular options there uh, for selecting you know, how far you want to go. Ideally I would go one more setting up and just like, countersink just this just a tiny bit. It is sticking out just a wee bit. Um, and uh, you know if you have a better drill you'll have that uh, but it is what it is you kind of get the closest you have um, this works as well for anything um, so if you're um, uh, drilling into hardwood or something and you want to leave a bit of the head out um, then you just uh, put it on a lighter setting and it, you know this uh, clutch torque setting is really going to depend on um, the material that you're screwing into it if it's soft Obviously, you'll want a lower uh, torque setting to get it to countersink it or to leave it out um, as needed. Uh, if it's a harder material, you're going to have to go up further. <clears throat> and then, obviously, if you're drilling uh, metal or wood, um, you're going to have to go all the way up to the uh, drill setting um, so that it doesn't uh, start uh, slipping like that. Uh, when you're drilling, because obviously when you're drilling, uh, the last thing you want is for it to slip. So that is how you use the clutch, and uh, s the the drill driver that I'll be showing you, uh, hopefully in a short while, is uh, it's called the Firestorm Smart Select, and it actually has um, a two-speed gearbox, so you can do a high-low power as well as uh, a, a clutch torque uh, setting. Uh, torque clutch um, so it has a few more options than this like I say this is kind of the one that came with it this was my backup for a long time this is now my primary because I broke my original kind of my favorite uh, drill um, so this guy works for the time being and you know it's it's a it's a heavyish old 18 volt um, but it works and uh, you know there's there's no particular reason to go out and buy a fancy uh, 20 volt 
uh, a drill. This kind of does what I need. Um, but um, pretty much any drill you get these days will indeed have um, the, the clutch on it. So you can countersink those screws. And it's invaluable if you have 50 screws to do. If you're, if you're doing a whole bunch of decking boards on a deck, you set this guy and you can bang, 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 bang the screws as, uh, as fast as you can stick them on the, on the bit there and it will not uh, sink too far, it will not split the wood, it will not fly right through the wood. I, I can even get it to the point where um, I set it to a torque setting, I put the uh, Robertson screw on, I start screwing it, and I'm not even watching uh, what I'm doing, I'm not even watching the deck board, I am screwing it and my other hand is going into, into my um, screw box and getting a new screw, so I'm not even paying attention to the screw um, that's going into the board there and uh, I'm just letting the clutch uh, do everything and maintain the correct depth and the correct power and when I hear it slipping that's when I know um, I'm done and then I can take the drill up and, and uh, grab another screw and uh, that's how you do it. You don't, it's a no-brainer, you don't have to think about it the, uh, the drill does everything for you and that is uh, my demonstration and my uh, uh, talk in the, you know teaching. Um, I don't know if this is going to help anybody, um, but if you've never used the uh, the torque setting, um, I would definitely recommend you uh, get familiar with it. It's super handy, and you can use it in all situations, whether you're um, driving screws into wood or drywall or any other material. Really, uh, I mean, the same goes for metal. Um, and one thing you can do, one thing you should do, is start off at the low torque setting and step up one each time. If it doesn't drill quite far enough, go to the next setting and so on until you find just the right setting where it, it uh, drives the screw just far enough um, that, uh, you know, as, as far as you need. And, and then, yeah, you can leave it at that and you get your job done a lot quicker. You, ha you do a lot less thinking about, uh, you know, whether you're feathering the, uh, the throttle on the drill or not. And, uh, and you get your, your work done cleaner and all your screws are sunk the uh, same depth into the wood and uh, all your screws in your drywall are dimpled um, the same amount and it really makes for a, a much easier uh, job done and a better job done uh, overall as well because it's more evenly done um, all, the, all the screws are the same uh, depth and you know torqued in the same way so that is it, um, and that's just using my old Black & Decker. Like I say, any drill is likely going to have the, uh, um, the the torque clutch on it. So make use of that. It is a handy feature. Your drill may have more or less, um, but definitely get one that at least has a, a torque clutch on it um, because it makes the, the job a lot, uh, a lot easier for you. All right, that's it. Thanks a lot, guys.